Good afternoon. My name is Marie Jones and welcome to the Getting Ready for the MBN webinar. I will be your facilitator for today's presentation. Throughout the course of the webinar, you may wish to ask a question. This can be done by typing a question in the space provided in the questions tab. Upon receiving your question, we may either respond immediately or respond at the conclusion of the webinar. Please note that this webinar will be recorded and made available on the NIGI YouTube web page for later use and reference. <clears throat> Finally, I'd like to thank you for taking part in today's webinar and on that note, hand you over to today's presenter, Ian Milmer, uh, Technical Consultant from the International Copper Association Australia. Thank you very much, Marie. Oh, um, welcome to everyone. Um, Obviously, this is a bit of a hot topic, getting ready for the MBN. And um, I was actually asked by Marie to do a presentation based on some feedback they had from some presentations I've done earlier, which were very targeted to businesses and not technical businesses, but business in general. So I've actually just tailored this a bit because in, in I think the case of this industry sector um, the business is probably a bit broader than what we call the business opportunity the impact. So what I'd like to cover, and uh, if, if I hope everyone can be hearing this okay, what I'd like to cover is, interesting, this, this, this worked before. Can you move the slide forward? Yeah, thanks. Only because I decided not to move forward. Thank you. So what I'll talk about is what will happen, what's actually going to happen with the um, MBN, what does it mean for my business, perspective from your business point of view, the impact it'll have on your immediate business as a business, regardless of what sort of business you're in, uh, where can we get the latest information and who can we talk to. So we're trying to just put, in a, put enough information so we can assist you make this this or take advantage and make the change and keep it as um, seamless as possible because it's not necessarily going to be as seamless as possible. Next slide, please. Is it in the clicker's gone? Oh, well, yeah, no, it's working again. Sorry, the clicker's gone on and off. <laughs> We're panicking here in these broadcast studios. <laughs> um, so what what's actually going to happen? What the MBN will actually cause to happen is improve your communications. At the end of the day, things are going to get better. Yes, there's a transition period. Yes, things are going to go up and down. Yes, there are going to be challenges. But what's going to happen is the way your telephone service is delivered to you will change. But for all technical purposes, your number shouldn't. So there's no need to change anything there. Your broadband service will get faster. It'll get faster not only in your immediate business uh, sites, but also potentially in remote offices. In particular, if you use a lot of home office uh, or people that work remotely from you. And uh, your special services will not change. And I'll come back to that because that's a key component. A lot of businesses tend to use special services, which are rather unique. So your telephone service will change. Um, it would look and feel the same as you, know, you have. And it, so you'll have the same number. But, and, and the but's absolutely clear. This has a challenge to your business to some extent and potentially an opportunity to your business as electrical contractors and people providing services to the community at large. The telephone line will not be part from the telephone exchange. So if in the old days, your telephone line came into your premises and it, it was powered from the telephone exchange under the new system, you, the minute there's a power outage, obviously, the active device in your residence, your premises will stop working. So unless you have a UPS, anything behind it, or the actual service will drop. This is particular, particularly important in the residential market where the greatest amount of upheaval will happen and potentially the greatest risk will be because a lot of services such as personal alarms and things like that will not be as seamlessly supported as they are now. So people that have security systems, back-to-base alarms, you know, personal alarms, you don't even know when the systems, when the power fails sometimes. It just all works seamlessly. Your existing telephone equipment 
may or may not interface with the new access technology. So you'll need to actually either use an adapter or upgrade your equipment. And I say may or may not, and, and there's a variety of ways you can connect to this new services that are gonna be arriving into your premises. And in preparation as a business, you've got to determine whether you are able to. Now, if you've got a business that has telephone systems that have more than one telephone line attached to it, that can be more challenging to change from the analog type technology to the uh, SIP type technology or the voice over IP technology that's being brought on by the delivery of MBN through or the broadband network through MBN. And there are two elements. One is getting the service to your premises and then what, who's, which service provider you choose because that will impact how they deliver the service. Even though MBN is going to provide the link to your premises, you then have to choose Telstra, Optus, TPG, INET, you name it. You have to make a choice and they'll, they then will provide some type of active equipment, which then you have to connect to. Some of those may or may not support or interface with your existing equipment. Now, if you've already got a VoIP system, you're probably okay. But if you've got an old analog type commander system or key systems as we knew them, they're probably going to be the ones that are going to hit the wall. But again, you need to check. So if you're making any decisions along those lines. Um, the following services may or may not work. And uh, in particular, your things like your FPOS, back to base alarm, lift phones, and fire alarms. And in actual fact, there's, there's a bit of a rat race going on between the various parts of the industry trying to work out how to handle that. So, for example, the banks are considering whether to move their FPOS onto a um, mo mobile type platform. Back to base alarms, you need to connect them to a voice port. If the voice port is provided through MBN's voice port, it probably will work, but the retail service provider you choose may not choose that option for delivering your voice port. So, therefore, you have to plug in through their active equipment. It might not properly support your back to base alarm, nor support your lift phone or your fire. So again, you've got to be able to confirm that. So in other words, this, this whole exercise is to make sure there are questions to be asked. Make sure you ask them before you make a decision to go with any retail service provider. Um, the broadband service will change. Your broadband service will be faster. But your connection is the same way as it's connected today, plugging into an Ethernet port. Um, what is worthwhile noting, by the way, is obviously we're going to have different delivery mechanisms, different access technologies. We're not all going to get fiber to the home. If not, over, not all of us are getting fiber to the premises, fiber to the home, then we're going to rely on alternative technologies, which is fiber to the node, fiber to the basement, um, HFC. And therefore, you will still have a greater variability of speed. So I would strongly recommend that upon anything being connected, the first thing you do is establish a benchmark for the actual speed that you receive. What I do, for example, the minute the ADSL was connected to my house, I did a speed test and I've recorded that, which is handy because when I feel there's a problem, I can do another speed test. And if there's a significant difference, I contact my service provider, and invariably, they're, they're required to reset something. Now, again, I have at least the, the ability to go back and say my speed is definitely significantly different, but your speed will vary regardless of what access technology you use. So what will it mean for your business? What do you have to do as a business, for your immediate business? Well, we need to start the plan. Um, You've got to document what telecommunication services you use, literally walk around what are the services that you're using, what equipment is currently in use, because all of those will somehow have to interface or be replaced with the existing offers that are coming through via MBN's network. And I'll reiterate, MBN is just delivering a pipe to your premises, terminating on a, on a device. The likelihood is most retail service providers will then connect another box, which will be a gateway of some kind, which will provide the functionality you want. Depending on what service provider you have, 
it will it will or will not support some of your existing tech equipment that you have in there and some of the equip the existing services and in particular those to do with alarm fos and those types of over the top technologies check with your service provider if the service you have will change and the equipment you have will work so it's absolutely critical now the reason i say check with your service provider if the service you have will change is for the following reason this is a rather long list and i'll come back to it and i'll tell you where you can find it there's a, a lot of different ser special services that have been rolled out over the year by telstra and optus in particular and they cover things like atm over copper and by the way that's a synchronous transfer mode which is sort of another technology that we sort of had that we thought was going to solve the world's problems and obviously it didn't um, but you can see things like custom net spectrum data access radio dds services whether it be fast way low speed ethernet services frame relay isdn which is a typical technology used to connect to large telephone systems that will continue to be provided be it over copper or whatever technology Telstra was or Optus were using so a lot of these specialized services will not be turned off so even though technically the copper is turned off it only gets turned off for the public switch telephone network analog lines anything that's special services that's in this list it escapes that so you are safe and I'll come back to exactly where you can actually get more information on where you can check this list because obviously none of you can write it down while I'm talking. I hope you can. Mm -hmm. So where can I get the latest info? Um, Nika has been working with the International Copper Association and all the other registrars and we've created this website called Registered Cablers website where we provide information which you can see it's the sign for the householders. So we have information for the householders. This is available for you guys to use as well when talking to householders. So you can now actually stay on, on message if I can say. It doesn't mean that our message is it's the only message. What I'm saying is that if there's any doubt, if we're all saying the same thing, then the householder will probably think it's true. In other words, they've got options, but they can then make an informed decision. We then have another section for business. So you can actually then drill down into the business and, and that's where we've got information and all those special services that I alluded to earlier on. So if you forget that list, you can go to this registered cablers website, click on for business and the list will appear there once you click around. And I, off the top of my head, I can't remember right now. So apologies for that. <laughs> And then finally is an information for cablers. And this is for cablers and the cabling industry. Information that is useful. And this is part of the site that will continue to grow because the information required is changing. Whilst a lot of the decisions that the public need to make are steady state, regardless of the access technology, how you connect to things, you need to know. So we're providing that. If you go into the section for cablers, It'll take you to a screen where you'll see it actually provides for more information for how you can participate. And what I mean by participate is you can register your company here on this website. So if consumers are looking for a local cabler to engage, you will come up on a search list. And that's, by the way, accessible and, and readily available and um, quite inexpensive. At the moment, I think it's predominantly free. So I think that's in the terms of quite an expensive. Um, the other part of it is for technical and marketing material, we can take you straight to a section where you just simply look at what are the latest technical and bits of information, what is the marketing material you can use, which uses this logo that you can see, this little guy there with MBN written on it, trying to actually get the message that in actual fact, you are, you are communicating what a consumer can validate on this website. When you click on um, the bottom to any of these, it'll take you to a login page. And the login page is quite simple to use. You need your cable registration number, so as long as you're a registered cabler, and you need your surname. So as long as you remember your surname, you should be able to log in. So there are 72, some 78,000 registered cablers nowadays. 
So all those 78,000 will have access to this. This is to support the cables. Feel free to use it, it's worthwhile. Once you go in there, you then have a choice of marketing material, technical documentation, and information on a smart wide code of practice. The purpose here is you can access the information as and when needed, and in particular, the technical information that's been highlighted there, I've done so because that'll keep on growing as we're finding more and more things that we need to communicate. I should mention that we as an industry, through the efforts that Nika and ourselves have done for the last uh, two, three, four years, have finally got some recognition from the Department of Communications. They have right, finally realized that the cabling industry actually will play a role in the migration from the existing telephone services to the services provided through the MBN. And um, part of that role, by the way, requires us to communicate to you. This is what we're doing right now, and we all hope to enhance it through more technical support as well. Once you click on technical documentation, it's a bit busy to slide, but the main thing here is we're trying to highlight is that there's technical information, and it comes from a range of sources. There's information available which is local to the site, which is home connectivity technologies. One of the questions we may be asked by consumers from time to time is, well, couldn't I just plug a wireless router and that'll be it? And as um, we are cableless, um, we don't mind wireless. It it's, plays a part, but wireless is not the end game. If you want reliability, then wireless has its shortfalls. So therefore, there's a document on home connectivity technologies. You can access, download, and understand the various comparative comparisons between the technologies so you can inform your consumer. And your consumer can access the same information, by the way, so they can validate it for themselves. And this comes from the industry, by the way, not just the cablers only. Secondly, we have information about wiring new or renovated homes. It is strongly recommended nowadays that if you are talking to a consumer and they want to obviously wire their homes, their premises, that you should have some form of structured cabling. Even though structured cabling is only a subset, what we call the smart wiring. Why? Because it covers the whole range of technologies. So the home is no longer just telephone and data. It's obviously telephone and data, which communications. You now have entertainment. You have energy management. You have security. You have health, digital health, telehealth. You have agent-assisted technologies coming through. You have intelligent homes where you can turn on and off anything you want. You have electric vehicles, and we're bringing in solar. We're bringing in storage. We're bringing in economic cable sizing. So in actual fact, we're increasing what has how the home is handled. And in the future, we've got to also think of the home in terms of how are we going to actually support the essential services? And for that, consideration must be given as, as to how to wire. If you use the smart wire type infrastructure, you're more likely to be able to support that for a significant period of time. The, the next bit is information that comes from the various service providers. Obviously, MBN, Telstra, Opticom, and, and again, this, this will keep on growing to actually give you access to the latest possible information. And by the way, if anyone sees the link is broken, let us know because everything changes. And I, I think, I don't know anyone that can actually keep up. <laughs> so, an information for cabling, what else are we gonna bring on board? There's, there's, there's quite a range of extra things that have been considered. More information on how to connect to the MBN. There, in the residential side, we've got voice and data. So we're currently working with our partners to actually develop quite specific technical information to assist you in actually making that connection. It may seem simple, but the difficulty is if the service provider to the build, to the places the place you're working in happens to be Telstra, then Telstra actually owns the existing network, and therefore there are things you can do on their cabling side that you can't do if you're doing the work for another retail service provider that doesn't mean own that. So there's, there are a few challenges associated with it. You've got to then take into consideration how are they going to interface into the MBN service? Are they going to use MBN's voice board? Are they going to use 
uh, a gateway. So again, you've got to know which re retail service provider, how do they provide it, how do you connect? So that information is being developed and that will be loaded on the site in the next few months. Also with the data, the data is also becoming critical because the data is no longer just, you know, cat five, cat six going to an outlet. But if you think about it, if I now have health services being delivered to my house, monitoring my health condition, my dialysis machine, my oxygen levels, whatever, okay, how is that service and monitoring service going to be kept up during a blackout? So I've got to now keep up the gateway during a blackout. I've got to keep up MBN's device. I've got to now keep up my monitoring device. So as we move into the future, you'll see power or Ethernet playing a greater role. So again, consideration has to be given how you wire the house and how you inform your consumers. The other side, of course, is the commercial. How do you wire voice? <clears throat> the biggest challenge with commercial is if you've got an existing telephone system, the old, the old key systems with, say, four or five or six telephone lines, can you use that? Or do you have to do a forklift upgrade, which is potentially something that might come into play? Um, so again, if you're now also putting equipment in, what sort of equipment should you put in? There are adapters, but unfortunately, you've got to find a retail service provider that will be able to support any adapters you may find in the market. So you can Google as much as you want. There's lots of information, but not, a, not everything can actually be used. So if you're talking to commercial clients, voice is actually probably quite tricky. That is probably the easy bit because it's just an Ethernet port. FPOS, lift phones and alarm systems are definitely the ones that you've got to be critical about because they've got to work. So from your business, you've got to make sure that you actually know what you've got to support that. From your customer's business that you might be supporting, you've got to make them aware that when choosing anyone, it's not just about a standard, hey, I want the cheapest, is make sure they will support what you currently have and that they can't, how can we actually transition to something new? So. The challenge is, if you've now been asked to do a cabling in a house where the MBN has just been installed, so you've walked up, you're the dark guy walking up into a little house here, okay, the question is, what is it that you're going to, what, what are you going to be confronted with? So the question is, where do I start? I mean, if, if you walk in and I've got to connect, what, the telephone service, or do I just connect the data, or do I have to worry about the personal alarm, the back to base? Um, back to base is actually a, a rather, rather critical one. Um, in some homes, uh, they use the back to base alarm not only for intrusion protection but also for smoke detectors. So it's important that those are still functioning because people have had them installed for a reason. So if you then look at what's the access technology, you've got to identify the access technology. Is it fiber to the home? Is it fiber to the node? Is it fiber to the building? Is it hybrid, hybrid fiber coax, the HFC pay TV? Is it fixed wireless? Is it fixed wireless or is it satellite? Now, part of the documentation that will start to appear on the Register Cables website into the future will be to deal with how you identify all this in particular. So on this screen, you currently see um, um, NTD, which is for, for the fiber. Um, that's the on the top left-hand side image is an NTD which is for fiber to the home. On the right hand side is a gray box which is actually when you have fiber to the node because you actually now get copper appearing there and below is an NTD that connects to a fixed wireless device. So that information will be provided so you can actually access it and therefore get an idea of how to connect. So after you spend a bit of time struggling of you know, getting over your head of where you've got to go, what you've got to do, the question is, whom can I talk to? Well, obviously, in their case, the industry association is a fantastic point, but also is, by the way, yourselves. And we're saying yourselves because consumers are the ones that we're directing to this site. So what we have now is on this registered cables website, we've actually placed a spot where you can actually register and you can be found and therefore consumers can contact you to find out any more information. So it is worthwhile to actually look at putting yourself on that. When you actually go into that 
find the cable site, it'll actually uh, give you quite a range of options that you can go to so you can look around different states and territories. So I recommend you actually log on and register yourself because you'll get the benefit of what we're doing. And we're st even though we're still talking with MBN Co and the Department of Communications to actually use this as a resource, they've recognized us, they just forget to put the link across. So, but that's another, that's part of the job that we're doing. So I'd recommend you actually register for it. Before I conclude, are there any questions? Well, if there are no, no further questions, I will now just, in conclusion, hang on. Some, ah, if you're off the mark, yeah. that's it. Sorry, we're discovering how technology works here sometimes. Huh? What will happen? Some, some changes for the best and some for potential disruption. The key is plan, identify what already exists, ensure you have what you know what you have. If you don't know what you have, you can potentially come and start in particular to do with all the over-the-top technology. I can't emphasize this strong enough. FPOS, personal alarms, back-to-base security alarms, um, and fire, fire lines, lift phones. It is absolutely critical they work. And therefore, if you're talking to any of your customers or in your business, you have anything, you've got to make sure you've actually documented it. And before you make a decision to use anything, ensure that you talk to the retail service provider. It's not what MBN does, it's what the retail service provider does. What does it mean for your business? You've got to start planning now because suddenly you'll get a notification from MBN when the network appears in your area saying that you've got 18 months in which to migrate. And after 18 months from the date at which they notify you, they will actually disconnect, or Telstra will disconnect the copper network because that's part of the agreement that they have between MBN Co. Telstra and the government. Then where can you get the latest information? The Registered Cablers website, obviously your association, but on a day-to-day -day basis, Registered Cablers website. And whom can you talk to? Please talk to us because the more questions we get, and I, this might have raised more questions than we might have answered, but the whole idea is that as we get those questions, we can find answers and communicate them to you and therefore add to our portfolio of information, which we'll then put onto the Registered Cablers website. I hope that's been of use to you and uh, beneficial. Thank you very much for your time. Any more questions? If there are no more questions, then we'll bring it to an end. Thanks a lot.